nosotras decimos que hay un hueco como para hackear al patriarcado desde internet o desde las redes sociales, no alcanza solo con eso. Las feministas estamos tomando todos los espacios públicos. Los espacios públicos pueden ser las calles, las plazas, eh, los lugares donde nos manifestamos. Internet, el espacio virtual, también es un espacio público. I fight for peace because I understand the consequence of war and I understand the price that one has to pay for war. The people who have lost their family will never be able to recover from it. We use social media to tell our story, to end FGM. Every year, three million girls are cut. Why is it that we're being silent about the lives of these girls? There is a daily war in Iran about my lifestyle. They have guns and bullets. We have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our social media. They cannot keep these people silent. That's something that I never lose hope. It's a punishable crime to be unveiled in public according to the laws, Sharia laws in Iran. You get lashes. You get jailed and fined. But more important than this, you won't be allowed to get an education from the age of seven if you take off your headscarf. You won't be allowed to get a job. You won't be allowed to live in your own country. My campaign was born from a simple picture. It was a picture of me running in a beautiful street in London. It was a spring, May. The trees were full of blossoms. And I wrote a caption on my picture that every time when I run in a free country and I feel the wind through my hair, it just reminds me of the time when my hair was like a hostage in the hands of the Iranian government. I ask women whether they want to share their pictures with me, stealthy moment of freedom with me. I was bombarded by pictures from women inside Iran being unveiled. So I created my Stealthy Freedom page on Facebook, which now has more than a million followers on Instagram, more than a million followers. And it's all about freedom. It's all about dignity. It's all about choice.
yo soy feminista y uso maquillaje, uso, no sé, voy a la peluquería, hago un montón de cosas que tienen que ver con, con el cuidado, no sé, no tendría por qué eh, estar vinculado a, un, a una estructura patriarcal. Cada uno elige cómo vivir ese feminismo, cómo transitar ese feminismo. En Argentina, hoy tenemos un femicidio cada 30 horas. En los casos de femicidio, la mayoría son las personas que viven con esas mujeres. Y la mayor de los, parte de los casos, 7 de cada 10 casos, son las parejas ex, o exparejas. Eh, a las mujeres nos matan nuestros conocidos. La campaña, ni una menos como colectivo, como movimiento de masas, es muy grande. La frase ni una menos tiene del otro lado otra frase, que es vivas nos queremos. Así como decimos paren de matarnos, también decimos que nos queremos vivas. Mi hermana se llamaba Suene, tenía 26 años y estaba de novia con Damián, vivían juntos y como él estaba muy agresivo, ella agarró una valija y empezó a guardar su ropa, dijo me voy a la casa de mi mamá y en ese momento que empezó a guardar su ropa, él la empezó a golpear y fueron golpes muy fuertes en la cabeza, ella sobre todo en un momento desmayó y, y se despertó con él eh, pegando patadas acá en esta parte. Eh, como gritó mucho y, y gritó, me va a matar, me va a matar, los vecinos llamaron a la policía y demoró un poco en llegar. Y tomaba remedios a base de morfina, entonces ¿De desde ese día nunca pudo ir a la facultad, nunca más volvió a su trabajo, entonces eso fue progresivo ocho no, meses no. hasta que falleció cuando tuvo una CV y, y después la cirugía y murió. El tipo salió libre como si no hubiera hecho nada. Pero hoy no tengo mitad de mi corazón. Porque uno queda con la cabeza mal de pasar todo eso, el corazón está mal, vos te quedás sin saber por qué de las cosas, por qué el ser humano tiene que ser tan cruel y por qué no hay justicia. Si un hombre mata a una mujer es porque puede, porque sabe que hay un sistema judicial que lo va a eh, proteger porque sabe que puede contar con esa estructura de impunidad y porque también hay una cuestión de fe hacia algo que creen que es ese sistema, ese, esa obediencia machista que tienen en relación a, a, a sus vidas. Lo que ocurrió después de ese primer ni una menos, después de 2015, es que se bajó la tolerancia a la violencia machista. Aquello que nosotras tolerábamos como natural, entre comillas, o normal, hoy decimos no, no es ni natural ni normal y no lo vamos a tolerar. Las mujeres ya salen a denunciar y a tratar de romper esas cadenas de sometimiento antes, mucho antes que eh, lo hacían en años anteriores. Al mismo tiempo, en Argentina existe la lucha por el aborto legal. En 
En Argentina la reacción frente al feminismo siempre genera esto que decíamos, neomachismos o agresiones. Hay a veces algunos grupos y sobre todo en relación al tema del aborto que nos atacan a través de, de internet, en Twitter o en Facebook y nos escriben mensajes y nos dicen asesinas. Y ahora que estamos Donc, à Falamadi, dit, euh, Louise et le Silla, non à l'excision. Non à l'excision. Ah ah! Oh, Applaudissez! Oh, oui! Et voilà! On nous allait avoir. Merci. Merci, on nous allait. Ok, oh, merci. Ah. Oh, merci. This is the house where the cutting happened. I remember that day like it was yesterday. This house is where I went from being just a normal young girl to being a survivor of FGM. Female genital mutilation in Guinea is rampant. We are the country with the second highest rate of girls and women who are cut. Between 96% and 98% of all women and girls in Guinea have been cut. The reason why fighting FGM in the country is so difficult is that it crosses social barriers. Educated people are cutting their children. Non-educated people are cutting their children. Poor people are cutting. Rich people are cutting. Um, Christians are cutting. Muslims are cutting. People who don't believe in any religion and are actually practicing ancient religions are also cutting. Girls are cut from when they're born to about anywhere between 10, 11, Sometimes, if it's later, it's 12, 13, 14. So it's from when they're born, usually from a week old, to that age of adolescence, they cut. There is no limit foundation was started in 2008 uh, with my sister Mariama Muni Kamara Petralovitz and myself. We started it with $18. So with $18 and a dream, we knew that we wanted people to have dignity and to be able to help themselves. So all of our programs are based in communities. We work with locals and we do microloans. We give women and girls the opportunity to have economic mobility, to own their own businesses, to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. 
The project of FGM only started in 2016. To us, it is not just about dropping the rate of FGM, it's about creating a new culture. It's about creating a new tradition and a new norm in our society. Without social media, our work wouldn't be the same. I actually use social media to connect with other sister activists around the world that are fighting against FGM. Sisters from Sudan, from India, from, you know, Somalia, all working in their own corner on FGM. And we use social media to regroup, to strategize, to support one another. Sometimes an activist might get death threat and tell us, what do I do? And we help them respond to it. So we, social media is critical. It's critical to everything that we do. My father's Captain Mandeep Singh. He was an army officer who lost his life during the Kargil War on 6th August 99. I've always wanted to be a writer. Ever since I was 12, I knew that I wanted to write this book. It's called Small Acts of Freedom. It's a family history, it's a memoir. It's a story about three generations of single women who've lived life on their own terms. And it's inserted with the memories that I have of my father. He comes back sleeping in a wooden box with a bandage on his chest, on the same spot where I used to lean my tiny head against and sleep, listening to the rhythm of his heartbeat. My father is finally home. I don't understand how he can sleep amidst all this noise and crying. People are taking his name over and over again, but he does not wake up. six years old, we were in this uh, utensil market. It was the first time I saw a woman in a burqa. And because I was told that Muslims are responsible for the death of my father, that Pakistan is responsible for the death of my father, I took a knife that was there and I leapt to go try and stab her.
my mother just caught on to me as she saw me running. She had no idea what I was going to do. But when she noticed, I think that's when she realized how much hatred I had been having in my own heart. Kashmir has been this territory that both the countries have been fighting over, but it's just this tiny patch of land and it's divided us to such a great extent that we have to face so much violence and damages and that so many people like me, so many young girls like me are paying the price for this kind of hatred on both sides of the border. This is where the retreat ceremony happens every day, where soldiers from the Pakistani Rangers and the soldiers from the Indian side, they shake hands and then there's this demonstration of power on who's more powerful. Also to evoke this nationalist sentiment in both the countries, but it's not hateful. There are just two gates here and across the gates the crowd looked the same to my eyes. We're the same colour, we're speaking the same language. The least that we as citizens, as human beings can do is end the hatred that's in our heart and cross that wire metaphorically. <laughs> I grew up in a small village which is close to the Caspian Sea. When I get homesick, the only thing that makes me feel home and happy is just going to nature, climbing the tree, going to mountain, or walking the seaside. It just reminds me of home. Our kitchen in the village are designed for women. It's shorter because women are shorter than men. So I remember I used to say to my brother, I know this is short for you, but there is a chair. Sit down and wash the dishes. So that shows that I started my feminist movement, my feminist revolution from my kitchen. That is important for women. We have to start being a rebel. Um, in our house. In our village, we didn't have a um, toilet in our house. We had outhouse. In, in the darkness, we had to go out. My mother used to say that the darkness is a monster, a shapeless black demon that feeds on your fear. If you are scared of it, then the shadow grows bigger, and it will envelop you and swallow you whole. Open your eyes wide, as wide as possible, she'd urge me when I was a young girl. Stare into the darkness, and the shadows will disappear. Never be afraid of the darkness, but stare it down.
my mother never had the chance to go to school, university, never. She's not even able to read and write. But to me, she's the true feminist. My father, he has stopped talking to me. He doesn't support me. He thinks that I'm against Islam, I'm against my own country, I'm betraying my country. But I think these are all happening just because, you know, the, the, the government really brainwashed like people like my father. Otherwise, my father loves me. When I was a student, I got kicked out from high school just because of my opinion. And then I became a journalist, parliamentary journalist. I got kicked out from the MPs just because I exposed the corruption. I became a columnist. Then again, because I criticized the president of Iran. It was just a week before the controversial election, 2009, my car got vandalized in Iran. And uh, two of my journalistic car was under my vehicle wheel. So that was a message for me that, you know, it's gonna happen to you as well. So I decided just, you know, to leave the country. Now I am here and I'm not going to keep silent. This is the room that I was living in when I was cut. So I heard like conversations and singing. African women, like we, we talk loud, you know, it, it, because it was a celebration. Right, to them, I was just like, wow, the singing is really close to me. It's really close to me, like, really, really close to me. I panicked. So I wanted to run away. But they come, we walk outside to the courtyard. And then we line up with my cousins and others. And then we take that long walk. I can't see what they're doing. But then there's this moment where, in that movement, where I just feel like, the sharp pain, you know, and it's just like, what is this? Like, I describe it like imagine when you're opening like a zipper, that slowness of opening the zipper, you know, literally, I could feel. My clitor is just off. And then pain, right? And then confusion. Mama, est-ce que toi, tu voulais que je sois excisée? Non. Ce sont tes tantes? Oui. Trois tantes. Narira. Matou. Fatou. Anou Marie. Les trois qui ont décidé de t'exciser. Pourquoi alors toutes tes filles ont été excisées? Pourquoi toi, tu as eu cette douleur où tu étais là-bas, tu as fait l'hémorragie? Tu as senti comment ça faisait mal. Et je sais que toi, tu ne supportes pas la practice. Mais quels sont, pourquoi est-ce que les femmes laissent leurs enfants? Pourquoi elles laissent que leurs enfants soient excisés? Le clé est, est les devoirs d'un parent. Le devoir d'un parent vis-à-vis -vis de son enfant. Mm -hmm. Donc vous, vous pensez que vous êtes en train de, de, faire, de faire du bien pour vos enfants? Pour nos enfants. Mm -hmm. Pourquoi? Parce qu'on dit que la femme qui n'est pas excisée n'est pas propre. Mm -hmm. 
que le sale. Uh -huh. el... I wasn't angry at my mom. I'm not angry at my mom. I'm not angry at my aunts. I was angry at myself. And I think that is the that is the problem with survivors. Is that we we sometimes take it too hard on ourselves. So I was mad at myself. I was mad at Myself for not hiding well enough. I was mad at myself for not biting their hands. I was, like all of these scenarios, it was always me. I did something wrong. Este es el primer encuentro de las mujeres que luchan, el primer encuentro internacional. Este es uno de los municipios autónomos rebeldes del zapatismo, que el zapatismo tiene dentro eh, de este territorio, que es un movimiento para reivindicar las luchas indígenas eh, de México y sobre todo también de las poblaciones eh, más pobres. Que desde antes de 1994, pero con el levantamiento en el 94, plantean eh, otra forma de vida posible, alternativa a este sistema capitalista. Las feministas estamos conectadas, queremos cambiarlo todo y queremos cambiarlo juntas. Hay una frase muy bonita que dicen ellas que es que tuvieron que encapucharse para que las vieran. estamos mirando y es un modo de vida totalmente alternativo. Una sociedad feminista es posible, la encontramos cuando nos encontramos todas juntas. ¿Y se esperaron que hubiera 6.500 mujeres que vinieran al encuentro? No, no nos esperábamos. Esperábamos que eran 600. Pero agregando en cero son 6.000. Soy periodista. Si mi trabajo fuera atender un bar, también tendría una perspectiva feminista desde el lugar que fuera atender un bar. Solo que me toca ser periodista, tener un lugar visible en los medios de comunicación y poder denunciar estos temas, hablar de estas historias eh, y poner en palabras la desigualdad que vivimos las mujeres, las lesbianas, las travestis y las trans, pero desde el periodismo. My activism started from my writing. The closest cause to my heart was always India-Pakistan. So I would write blogs and I would write stories and I would interact with people. And just slowly I became part of these Indo-Pak groups and slowly I became part of these online movements and forums. Social media is that platform where I can reach out to people because There's so many people on my social media now, and I'm strange when I look at the numbers, I'm quite surprised, but I also understand it's a lot of responsibility.
when we started that campaign, uh, somebody, well, the right wing mostly, picked up one placard from my video to make a point that I am an anti-national human being and I have anti-national tendencies because I ask for peace with Pakistan. It is Gurmeher Kaur, a young student of Lady Sri Ram College, who has ignited a fiery debate on social media and beyond on nationalism and free speech. What riled many at the time was the belief that her video ended up giving a clean shit to Pakistan. She wants peace with Pakistan and she gets... So after the whole thing became national news, after when I was on every single prime time, and it was a very, very, very scary time, my phone was hot because there were so many messages coming back to back. And, and the strangest thing is they were all messages of hate. They were all messages of... Uh, messages of how somebody would want to uh, hurt me, how somebody would, uh, the very, very explicit messages of how one would want to tear my limbs apart and how they would want to rape me. Do you know who these people were? Did they call you up to threaten you or was it on social media? You apparently have reported this to the police now. It doesn't matter how the threat is coming to you, whether mm -hmm. it's a pigeon bringing it or whether it's a it's on social media whether somebody's calling you. Rape threats are not okay. Death threats are not okay. These things are not jokes. You're fearing your life because you don't, because it's not just one person saying it to you that you can go to the police and report it. You are, it's, it's a hundred different accounts. It's a hundred different people saying it to you. And that gets to you. I think no matter how strong you are, that kind of hatred in that volume um, has, has a way of getting into your head. I launched my study freedom, but after three years, it was oh. everywhere. So like the president of Iran knew about it, talked about it, all the media around the world, the media inside Iran, Iranian state TV, clerics. And I thought, oh my God, now this is the time. We have to shift the online movement to something offline. These people need to identify each other. So in 2017, I decided to actually, um, you know, pick a day, pick a color, and help these people to identify each other in public. These women on White Wednesdays, they are lonely soldiers, lonely warriors. I called it a one-person demonstration because they never have the permission to take the street. They will be shot, they will be, you know, into prison, they will be tortured, but they are brave. They found their way to protest against oppression. گویا به خاطر ماجرای چهارشنبه سپید و عضویت تو این کمپین من رو احضار کردن چند نفر دیگه هم داخل بودن بابت همین موضوع و همسران بهشون گفتن که این کار غیر قانونیه و باید یه برگر احضاری کتبی به ما بده تونستن این برگر رو ازشون بگیرن که حالا من صحبت کنم ببینم ماجرا از چه قراره فقط حالا تونستیم قراره کفالت شیما تو الان آزادی با قرار کفالت در واقع خب اینجا اینا هم میخوان بدونن نمیترسی حرف میزنی؟ نه واقعا نمیترسم ببین من خودت میدونی همشه نه تنها دق دقه هجاب اجباری داشتم دق دقه حقوق بشری هم خیلی داشتم نه برو اوکی بای It's not me leading the campaign It's them leading the campaign and I am only their voices تاش هم های this is the time men should get involved in women's movement. So I created another campaign called Men in Hijab. The government of Iran want to control the society because they know that this generation is not going to keep silent. They found social media as an alternative media to express themselves. 
to be loud and to break the censorship. That is why the social media itself is a, is a threat for the Islamic Republic of Iran, so they try to block it. Because they see this as the main battleground, and they don't want to lose control. The rituals, the ways that girls are being lined up when they're actually being cut, those rituals come from the past, and it is still something that people are continuing. This is all about the secret of FGM. It's almost like a secret sisterhood. are doing is to remove the secrecy around the cutting. So we want people to be able to understand it so that they understand that one, you know, the cutting is not necessary. So we are doing alternative rites of passage. What the community showed us was how they used to celebrate the girls but then it will end with the cutting. And what we are trying to do with them is to teach them that you could still celebrate girls, you could still celebrate your tradition, but you don't need to do the cutting. <laughs> When we're doing events, we use social media to tell people where we're going to be. Um, the young people, they'll post it on social media, tag us to it, and talk about how we are talking about FGM and the fact that they are denouncing it. En Argentina, en estos momentos, una de las demandas centrales tiene que ver con la despenalización y legalización del aborto. Las pibas ya elegimos. Ni el Estado, ni un médico, ni un juez, ni tu familia, ni tu docente, ni la iglesia. Nosotras abortamos, nosotras decidimos. Es una campaña que tiene como símbolo el pañuelo verde que nosotras usamos en los cuellos, en las muñecas, que se puede ver en las calles colgado de las mochilas, de las carteras de muchas de las chicas, porque hoy eh, las más jóvenes son las que empujan esta lucha. El feminismo es un movimiento intergeneracional. Acá 
en Argentina tenemos una frase que es eh, las ricas abortan y las pobres mueren. Además de la criminalización, la falta de una ley de aborto legal, seguro y gratuito se traduce también en la muerte de muchísimas mujeres que mueren en el camino de interrumpir sus embarazos. Mueren porque son empujadas a la clandestinidad y abortos inseguros. Desde el regreso de la democracia hasta ahora tenemos 3.030 mujeres muertas por aborto clandestino. palabra a la siguiente oradora que es María Florencia Alcaraz, periodista. No vengo a discutir con ustedes, diputados y diputadas, el derecho al aborto, porque nuestros derechos no se discuten. Vengo a preguntarles cómo van a ser, diputados y diputadas, para garantizar este derecho ahora que les toca dar dictamen de comisiones dentro de una semana. Si las feministas nos paramos acá en un ámbito que no nos pertenece, Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I want. Salam, I'm Masia. I'm Zodam. I'm Sado Chero. Sebomi Barami. Tablet. I'm Salman. Kita Zaz Iran. Bargashte. Mohan Shahid. Baro Mo. Adi Shode. Vali. Tu Dunia. Ange Beshta. Man Yer Ruhani. Arshat. Ye Majlis. Sath. Bola. Tu Keshva. Be Gheri. Kamar. Mardom. Am Kar. Dare. Ab Be Rakhsi. Dare. Mardom. Ba Kone. Shne Shomide. Mian. Ina Ghas. Kudum. Ghar. Umade. This is a big clip show. Actually. In this show, I give the platform to women inside Iran. I mean, mostly women. It's about you know people inside Iran who can use their camera and be their own um, voices, be their own media, and send the video to me. I feel like I'm hugging the whole Iran. You know, they they kicked me out from my country, but they couldn't take Iran out of me. So now social media and this show is my window toward Iran. Of course, I am scared of receiving a lot of death threats, especially when I see that the government attack me through cyber army, calling me prostitute, calling me ugly, the agent of CIA, the agent of MI6. This kind of things actually from the beginning it was kind of hurting me, but not now, not anymore. I'm ready. Ready? I come here in my happy times to thank God for everything good that has happened. But I also come here whenever I'm sad, whenever I need help, whenever I feel so helpless that I have to reach out to something greater than me. Life has changed a lot. Now I'm going to be a public figure. People will know me by my face, by my work. Just give me strength that I can take this position of influence, this position where so many people are looking at me and listening to what I have to say. Please give me strength to, so that I can give the best to the world, the best to mankind. dream but the biggest one is one day women in Iran have the power to run the country.
my dream is just to see women are as equal as men. Anticipándote lo que va a pasar con este debate histórico que tiene que ver con la interrupción voluntaria del de embarazo. Negativos, 38 votos. Afirmativos, 31 votos. El aborto en Argentina va a ser ley, no fue hoy, no va a ser mañana, pero creemos que hay un cambio que es irreversible y que eso no hay vuelta atrás y eso tiene que ver con el movimiento de mujeres. She's got hundreds of girls for her recollection. She doesn't know the actual count. And I'm glad that she promised to me. She swore to God that she will not cut a child again. My dream is that women will be valued all over the world. That it will be okay to be a woman. That we don't have to explain the space that we have to take.